What's up, peeps? I'm currently testing the Dark Rock 4 from Be Quiet, not because we haven't done that in the past. I actually use this cool, this exact test bench in pretty much all of our case reviews ever since the beginning of 2019 or so. Uh, so I am just trying to get a baseline because we are running this as an open air test bench. You can see I've got this really expensive test bench here behind me, <laughs> a motherboard box basically. And uh, so once we get the baseline, I've been burning this in for about 30 minutes. I'm just gonna track temps there. And then I'm gonna throw in the Noctua NH-U12A, which is a cooler I'm sure you've seen on a few other channels by this point. I think that there's a fair comparison to be had though between the Dark Rock 4 and the U12A. The U12A has one extra heat pipe, seven versus six, but they're about the same size. So we'll see how they do. It's easy to look past certain things, but an Activate Windows watermark? Yeah, not one of those things. Snag a verified OEM Windows 10 key from SCD Key for a little over 10 bucks and enjoy a fully activated OS without the annoying compromises. Use offer code SSTUDIO for an 18% discount on your order. One of the things I wanted to do very quickly was show you how we stress test the CPU and GPU for these kinds of videos. Uh, I use Ida64 because I just think it's very consistent. I like the UI, I'm familiar with it. In many ways I could do this. I could stress the, the GPU individually using like Superposition or 3D Mark. Uh, I could stress the CPU CPU with Blender or Cinebench, like that's all fine, but I like that this is all integrated and I can stress both at the same time within the same uh, program. Uh, so it, it doesn't really matter very much how you stress test as long as you're stressing to the degree that you want, right? So 100% utilization, 75% utilization, whatever, uh, but you wanna keep it consistent across runs. So in this case, when we switch the CPU cooler, I'm not gonna touch anything in the BIOS, in this program, I'm just gonna run it again and we'll be able to compare uh, just side by side without any other variables for the most part at play. So I just stopped the test, we let it burn in for about 37 minutes, I'll be sure to run the uh, the Noctua test for the same amount of time. Then we're gonna come up here to the statistics tab and this is gonna show you the mins and maxes for the entire run. So you can see our CPU cores peaked at 89 degrees Celsius and our GPU at the diode reached 60 degrees Celsius. Yeah, that's not the best temperature. This CPU honestly kind of missed the mark when it came to the silicon lottery. Uh, actually, it totally missed the mark. So this is not a very good one, not a very good overclockable chip, uh, especially considering we have a 200 plus TDP cooler on top of this thing. We are using Dubauer uh, Carbonaut pads though, and that is something I'll show you when I remove the Be Quiet cooler. This will keep things very consistent when it comes to quote unquote thermal paste application. Because we don't have to use that anymore, we can use a thermal pad. It keeps the uh, the barrier between the IHS and the CPU cooler very consistent. All right, now we've got the PC powered off. I'm gonna go ahead and switch that off and we'll cycle power. Uh, one thing I will discuss after we run through the temperature test uh, is the difficulty with installation. So this cooler is actually pretty easy to install. It's much easier than the Dark Rock Pro 4, which is a much bigger cooler. Uh, just because the clearance is here for like the screws, like the two Phillips screws on either side of this little strut bar that goes across the cooler, it's just much easier to access. Uh, we'll see how that differs with the NHU-12A and uh, if it is any easier overall. Very briefly, wanted to show you the hardware setup here, the installation, the parts involved, and uh, Be Quiet's looks to be a bit more complicated and that's really just due to the fact that they have less pre-installed already out of the box. As uh, so you can see, we've got the Phillips screws here pre-installed over the cold plate for the Noctua cooler. Uh, we've also got pre-installed uh, little standoffs here. Back plate, I have them actually inserted here, but they don't come pre-installed with the Be Quiet cooler. Not that it matters. I mean, like this is like tiny self. I'm just trying to show you the small differences. Also between the two coolers, let me get low here. The Noctua cooler is slightly thinner from a front to back aspect than the Be Quiet Cooler. You can see the Be Quiet Cooler is thicker uh, from top to bottom in this orientation. What I think will make up for it though is the extra heat pipe. So we have an extra heat pipe here for the Noctua Cooler. The cold plate is also slightly larger I've noticed. Uh, and uh, the Be Quiet Cooler really just has what looks like slightly denser uh, fin array. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's really about it. I, I'd say these coolers are gonna be very close to each other and uh, the differences are gonna be very, very small. So let's get to installing the Noctua cooler and I'll let you know if the installation process was in fact any easier.
All right, and yes, the Noctua cooler was definitely the easier cooler to install. Also, thanks to its slightly narrower form factor, we have a bit more uh, clearance here for our RAM. So even with the front fan installed, we could put modules in all four slots. With the Be Quiet cooler, we'd have to use a smaller 120 mil fan up front and then uh, hopefully, you know, fix some of that height clearance, but you still probably wouldn't be able to put some beefy modules in there like Corsair Dom Platts or something of the like. Another difference worth mentioning, the Noctua cooler comes with two 120mm fans. These are great fans, by the way. They're slightly, well, maybe slightly is an understatement, uh, ugly in my opinion, but they do the job very well and they stay very quiet. We'll talk about sound test here in a second. So I'm not gonna cripple the Noctua cooler. I am gonna run tests though with just a single fan installed and then two fans to see the difference there. We'll compare both to the Dark Rock 4. So here are the summarized graphs, starting first with CPU core temperatures. You can see that our two fan NH12 UA config is actually running a bit hotter. Uh, and this might have to do with the fact that we're running an open air test bench. If we steal this off in a case, uh, it might benefit uh, the computer to have two fans instead of one, especially if the case is rather risky restrictive when it comes to airflow. Uh, the single fan config was 76.9 degrees on average and then 81.8 for the Dark Rock 4. Maximums are pretty much the same story, 85 degrees Celsius for both Noctua runs and then 89 degrees Celsius for, so a, a four uh, degree Celsius jump from the Noctua to the Dark Rock 4. Next up we have sound, how loud each cooler was under load. Obviously the two fan Noctua config was the loudest, 42.2 decibels and then a uh, single fan config dropped that down to 40.2. Again, just another reason to, to opt for a single fan config. I, I hope Noctua does offer that in the future. Dark Rock 4, 38.1. This is a pretty big difference. Two decibels doesn't sound like a lot, but it is uh, just based on the logarithmic scale that we're talking about here. So uh, the Dark Rock 4 was noticeably quieter under load. By the way, I was going to test it idle as well, but it was difficult to zone out the background noise here. It's just, I can't help my neighbors and uh, it's bike week this week, so. Yeah, uh, but uh, once things got really loud, right, when the coolers were under load, it was easier to distinguish those from the background. Uh, but uh, both of these coolers at idle were pretty much inaudible. I, I would say you'd be hard pressed to hear it, especially if that build is in a case. Last up, we have price in USD. So I just looked up Amazon and Newegg prices here. Uh, the Dark Rock 4 selling on Amazon right now for 75 bucks, uh, and the NHU12A is selling on Newegg for about 100 bucks. So you're saving 25%, $25 by choosing the Dark Rock 4 over the NH12A. And what I really think could be Noctua's competitive advantage here is if they offer just a single fan instead of the dual fan config that you get stock in the box. That could potentially lower the price of the unit down to around 80 bucks. I mean, these fans sell for 20, 30 bucks a pop. They're good fans. I would still probably choose Silent Wings 3 just because they tend to be a little uh, lower toned and that's a little harder for most humans to hear in my opinion. So I think that uh, that design is, is optimal. Um, so I'm not too thrilled about the fact that we have two fans and we're actually paying extra for that as well. Now at this point, I kind of feel like I'm in the middle of the Intel versus AMD debate with respect to these coolers because while the Noctua cooler is definitely the better cooler, it's probably the best cooler I've ever tested in its form factor. Like for its size, I actually think it is the best cooler I've ever tested. Uh, that's saying something. It's a lot smaller than the NHD 15, but it performs like an NHD 15. So that's an incredible feat for Noctua, good job. While it is the better one, it is also the more expensive one by 25%, 25 USD, that's nothing to, I mean, that might sound small to some of you, but 25 bucks, that goes into a better graphics card, better motherboard, better case, I and mean, you could spend that money in a lot of different ways. So if you want the, the, the headroom, uh, maybe you wanna just save money, there's nothing wrong with saving money, the Dark Rock 4, in my opinion, is the winner. If you're going for pure performance, you want to squeak out the most you can out of your CPU, then the U12A is the better cooler. So you see, it's kinda, yeah. Pick a side. All right, if you're gonna make me pick eight times out of 10, it'd be the Dark Rock 4. I'm pointing that way because it's sitting over there disassembled. And I say that for, for three reasons. First off, it's cheaper. Second off, it's quieter. And third, it looks better. That's my preference. I prefer coolers that don't look like dirt and the Noctua fans kind of do look like dirt. Look, you could smack some Chromax fans on there and it'd look great, but that's more money you gotta spend out of pocket, right? So 
I don't really advise that. It'd be nice if Noctua shipped Chromax fans with these coolers, or better yet, just took out the second fan, which I find to be redundant, at least in my testing, uh, brought that price down to 80 bucks. Then I would have a dilemma, five out of five. I mean, literally, uh, five times out of 10, I'd choose an Noctua cooler, five times out of 10, I'd choose the Be Quiet Dark Rock 4. Uh, but I think in this case, the Dark Rock 4 wins because it's a better value, it's AMD, kind of hard to deny good value, uh, but if you're going for sheer performance, the U12A is where it's at. So I've linked both down below. You can pick if you're into uh, buying either of these coolers. Uh, I bid you farewell. It's going to be a tough choice, uh, but I, I can tell you, you're really not going to go wrong with either of these, and if you have like a closed off case or whatever, then uh, in my opinion, the Noctua cooler, despite its slightly louder profile, is definitely better in terms of RAM clearance and sheer performance. If you guys like this video, thumbs up. I appreciate it. Thumbs down for the opposite. Or if you hate everything about like, click that red subscribe button if you haven't already. And I'll catch you in the next one. This is Science Studio. Thanks for watching and thanks for learning with us.